And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Kara Darling, who encountered God during her near-death experience, and today we're going to learn about it. Kara, thank you so much for being my guest, and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. It's my pleasure to be here. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. If you don't mind, can we start on the day that your NDE happened and go from there? Christmas Day. Christmas Day 2013. Mm-hmm. I jokingly say that's the day that, that the world discovered Jesus, and it's the day that I I guess I came back as him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but um, they, a lot of people talk about um, religious rebirths, and I, I, I talk about it being a unbirth because the day that I died was the day that I started living. So what happened? Well... I was in a very, uh, very traumatic and severe um, marriage that was abusive. Um, we had black mold in the home and it had been discovered about a month earlier. And um, nobody really took it that seriously until Christmas Day. And I was actually found dead. My paperwork said DOA, dead on arrival. Um, I was alone, which is unusual for a Christmas Day in a, in a married woman. But <clears throat> everybody had um, gone to the bar to drink and I didn't want to. I was having a really hard time um, with my the people in my life, I guess. Christmas Day was always my dad's favorite holiday, and it had kind of been destroyed. And he had been, this was my stepdad, and he had been dead for about 20 years. He died on December 27th of 1995. And he was diagnosed with cancer, and they said that he had three months, and that was in May. And he said, I'll be damned if I'm not going to give you one more Christmas. So he died two days later after that following Christmas, which was amazing to me. But um, when I, <clears throat> when I died, um, you said I encounter God and I did it, but it came in the form of, of him, an image of him, my stepdad, who I'd seen several times throughout my life. Um, when I'd had uh, medical issues, I, I, I've, I've had a lot of pregnancies that I've lost uh, due to hemorrhaging of, of a tubal pregnancies. And every time I had gone, uh, under surgically, I always woke up and saw him in a deserted hospital. So of course he's the one that would come to me in death, but as God, <laughs> cause he was kind of the God in my life. He's the only man who had never hurt me ever, no matter what he, he had never, ever disappointed me, never hurt me, never scarred me. So he was kind of my guide, <clears throat> but I mean, if we if I can back up just a little bit, um, that, that didn't happen until, um, I'd gone through what felt like a tunnel. And it felt like I was um, walking in air underwater. That's the, that's the best way I can explain it. Hmm. it. It was very light feeling, but very slow motion, very, very aware, very, very rhythmic and, and ca- the cadence. And I looked around and I saw uh, the, the silhouettes of other beings there too, but it was all in, in like the static um, in 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 environment environment's the wrong word. It's like a, a static, um, almost like a dousing of static that you're walking through or floating through or something. And it was it was weird because I I was still consciously completely aware. I was like, oh, I'm in the tunnel. This is what happened in Ghost. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I was like, well, where's the light? Shouldn't I go towards the light? <laughs> And I turned around and all I saw was other beings running towards me. And I turned around to my my back towards them. And there was this big flash of just white, nothing. Just, and then all of a sudden I was standing on an Island that I created in my head at eight years old when I'd go meditate in the lavender fields with my horse. I grew up on a farm in Heber, never seen an ocean, never seen a beach, but I created this beach in my mind. Um, that's where I'd go in my happy place when I, I was a <laughs> as a child as well, unfortunately. Um, so I'd go in the lavender fields with my horse, lay down, look at the clouds. And all of a sudden I was standing on an Island and a beach and I'd never seen one before. So that's where I went after this big white flash of nothing. And I was standing on the Island that I created in my head in meditation as a child and coming towards me, um, flipping in and out kind of in a holographic form was my stepdad. Mm. And that's who presented himself to me as God. And did you communicate with him? Yes. Yes. He came 
up to me and he said, well, first he, he put his hand on my cheek and that's what my dad always did. And um, when I was just a child, I, I would I would see this angel that would come in and I would hear music in his hands. And that's that. those were the memories that I would have of the abuse until I got older. When I was 27, um, the, the memories came in like, in, as in flashbacks. But before that, I just had, I just had memories of this angel who had music in his hands. And as a living man, I, I heard the music in my dad's hands, my stepdad's hands, when he came into our life. And that day in death, he put his, his hand on my face and I heard the music again. And he hugged me and I cried. And he said, this is how we knew you. Um, this is what we knew you needed to see and experience to know that you were in a place of love and you're safe but you can't stay. Hmm. He said, you're not done yet. And then like with a snap, we were standing on the top of a mountain and there was this illumination, this as far as I could see in the water beneath it. And he said, these, these are the light beings that came to celebrate your visit before you go home. You have a choice to make. And he said, you can either go back and fix this because you kind of made a mess or you can start over, but that delays your purpose. What did the light beings look like? Every single one of them had some kind of human characteristic. Uh, some of them had legs. Some of them did not. Some of them were um, equestrian, if, you know, like uh, fish uh, beings, but they were, they, were, they were in and out of the water. They all had like human faces. They all had um, human characteristics. Some had hands. It, it, so when I understand when God says I created you in my image, because I believe that the human face and the human embodiment no matter what the rest of the details are, is this that is like the source of the connection of of the creator, <clears throat> I guess, being that um, source love, I guess you could call it God. That's the embodiment, some sort of human, I guess, characteristic. Um, but every single one of them had human eyes, uh, some sort of a human face, and some sort of some sort of human hands even if it was many of them they all had different color auras just lit up like like lights mm -hmm. and they were the illumination the the the, the, the um beings the, they were the illumination do most you beautiful lights i've ever seen do you think that they were angels we're all angels we're all fragments of god we're all connectors of him and through him and by him and of him and <clears throat> to me in that day and the things that he explained to me a lot of a lot of the interpretations and a lot of the translations from his his guidance and his teachings have gone <sighs> misinterpreted maybe misunderstood mis mistranslated because he said I, I did create you in my image to be me for me where I'm not and I know God is everywhere God is imminent God is you know all, all of those things but he's not physically here so what that said to me was, without being blasphemous, I'm God here for me of my world to not put another God or human in front of me to love me better than what my creator can love me and what I felt on that day. And the, the, the music and the harmonies, the frequencies, the algorithms, it was all just, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced. In fact, I tried to close my eyes three times and go back. <laughs> Once I once I came back into my body, I realized that being a human hurts. <laughs> this hurts. Everybody's so afraid of death, but that's the most wonderful feeling of bliss and lightness and intoxication that I've ever had in my life. And I was sober and I felt like I was there for years, but it was just a few minutes here. Did he explain to you why do we come here? Yes, we're here to experience something other than bliss because that's all there is there. We're here to experience emotions. We're here to experience the highs and lows. We're here and we chose these vehicles and we designed these avatars and we did, we did it on purpose. And, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to give our, ourselves, I guess with the bedside manner is the right word, another human in front of us to make me, make us experience these emotions that are in our blueprint to collect the data on that he's collecting because he's not here to experience it himself or she or it, whatever you want to call it. I found it interesting that you described it as walking around in air, but in water. I'm not sure if those Underwater. are your exact yes. words. 
Yes, it felt like I was walking through air underwater. I think another one of my guests kind of described it being thick, like you said, and the guest said it was like velvety. A molasses. It's like you're walking through molasses, but it's so light and buoyancy at the same time. It, there's no effort. It's just very slow and methodical in the cadence. It's to a rhythm. It's to a, a, a beat. And I believe that that's the, the, the beat or the drum of, of God. When the beings were running towards you, did they look like humans or did they look like light beings? They were silhouettes. Like I said, it, it was like when you looked around, it was static, like on the TV. But you could make out the silhouettes of other, I guess, souls that were moving through the in-between. Mm. Uh, some people call it purgatory. Some people call it wh whatever you want to call it. But I'll tell you what, there was no pearly gate. There was no judgment. There was no purgatory. There, there was no anything. It was just my island and my dad walking towards me. And when he would blip in and out, because I, I, I knew it was a holographic image of what I needed to see. But it was like this little tiny blink, 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 blink guy. Like this little tiny light being, this little ball of fire in the middle of this hologram or behind, I guess, kind of like the wizard behind the curtain. And he was blink, 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 blink. And it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. The most, the most, it was the most safe I've ever felt. The most, there was no guilt. There was no, there was nothing but bliss and understanding that this little ball of blink, 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 blink was God. This little thing, like a little Furby. Hmm. But that was God. After you came back, how did you change as a person? Everything changed. Like I said, I started living. I started living. Um, while I was in the hospital uh, during that experience, um, I was in ICU for three days, <laughs> three days and three nights. <laughs> so was it rebirth or was it res resurrection? I don't know. But um, there are certain parts of my consciousness my gifts that were heightened because of it. Um, but also I was reminded of my gifts that I had as a child because, you know, we're all connected to the theta realms until another human tells us that that's make believe. <laughs> and so because we don't want to be the weird kid or we don't want to disappoint them or we don't want to tell them that our experience is different than what they're telling us it should be. As children, we let that go and we dive completely in with both feet but I, I never had really a human in my life that could convince me that those were angels and that was a human and these angels are telling me that's a bad human. So I never really let go of that, I guess. And um, as after my experience, that intensified and I was able to see them and communicate with them again. It's, it's like the Theta realms opened completely up and never, never closed again. Did you get any new gifts after your experience? Yes. Can you share those with us? Um, well, uh, telekinesis, certain certain things um, made out of certain materials. If sometimes when I reach for my phone, it will actually turn. It doesn't come towards me. It doesn't float in air. But I know that if, if I harness that and if I, if I focused on it, I believe it's because there's crystal quartz inside the, the, the phone that, you know, make the technology what it is. And because of the, the like rose quartz or, you know, th these different types of stones that are of the earth, and because I was so close to that part of life being in death, I was one with the earth again. So when I reach for it, it responds, I guess is, is what I, I've, I've decided in my head makes sense. Um, <clears throat> my premonitions and my predictions become very, very intense. And my emotions sometimes affect other, they, they affect animals, they affect um, sometimes the, <laughs> Okay, so I'm getting outside of my sorts here is what people would say, but um, sometimes when my emotions get too intense and too too quick, um, like beer bottles will, will burst or light bulbs will burst or the weather will all, all of a sudden change. And is that is that me? I don't know. All I can tell you is what I've experienced or become aware of, super, super sensitive, hyper aware of since then. Was it always that way? Maybe, but it's something that I've I've definitely become aware of a change or or a thing that happens when my emotions become too intense too quickly. What about electronics? Electronics go haywire when I get around too many of them. Hmm. They start feeding over each other and they start shutting down or the lights, if I'm in a good mood, the lights will go brighter. If I'm in a bad mood, they'll go completely off. 
again, coincidence. I don't know. Something that I just became aware of since since all of this. Maybe it's because I just started sitting still and looking for parts of heaven here. Or for, maybe it's because every single day I look for the bliss I found in death. So I'm completely aware of everything around me and how to keep it in a, a blissful, harmonic frequency so that I can feel that lightness again. But the one thing I remember God saying is if, if it's not love, it's conflict and don't be around it on purpose. Did you have any negative after effects after your NDE? Negative in what sorts? I mean, not physical, but just sometimes people have trouble processing it or, you know. I didn't have trouble processing it. Other people did. So the only, I guess the only negative after effects I would have is eliminating those people. Hmm. And some of those people were very important in my life. And some people had been there for a very, very long time. But I realized that those people were influencing me in a negative, non-humanitarian way. So since then, I've, I've, um, I've, I've, been diagnosed online, not, not by, a. I, I need to get a hard diagnosis, but I've realized, I've come to realize that I am uh, autistic, an extreme executive functioning way because I had to get over my symptoms as a child or I was abused for them. Hmm. So I, I did find that my autism has increased. Okay. So the friends that you wanted to keep, how did they react to the new you? Oh, they love it. Um, I've, I've been very fortunate to have been who I was, I guess, before that experience, because they and a lot of a lot of my girlfriends have um, adopted this description. I'm the kindest <laughs> I'll ever meet. Hmm. <laughs> so I I've, I created a lot of very kind <laughs> around me that loved me more than anybody, but only tolerated this much of whatever was new that wasn't acceptable and and they didn't want to keep as part of me. And so um, after that, I lost my home because I didn't have, I I let the home insurance lag um, because of the abusive situation that I was in, the traumatic situation that I was in with this guy. I did leave him 28 days later. Um, uh, So I, I found myself couch surfing. I was a master stylist and had spent 26 years doing hair. Um, And I had taken a lot of people into, into my, my, my home. I had a three bedroom condo and I lived there alone. So I rented two of the rooms out and I thought that there would have been a bigger lineup of people that would have been willing to take me in temporarily to help me understand some things and get back on my, on my feet. Um, one of the, one of the things that you asked me, um, that changed about my personality was I would, I'd tune out and I, I would you know, um, the, the girlfriend that I'm staying with now, she's one of the, she's one of the first people that I went to stay with and she would leave to go to work. She worked from home now, um, which is fortunate for her, but she would leave to go to work and she would come back and I would be doing the same thing or in the same, you know, uh, like almost like, um, I, I don't, like an, almost like an, an animal that had just been, you know, fixated or, or, spooked or something that was was too afraid to move and I would be in the exact same position or or say I was in the shower when she went to work at 9 a.m and at 2 p.m when she came back for lunch or whatever I would still be in the shower not understanding that I'd been in there for that amount of hours so time time lapsed and time didn't make sense and I and I I tuned out a lot I I don't do that so much anymore um but it it has become a, a very useful tool if I'm in a a a state of trauma or or you know if I'm in a state of danger I can sit still for I don't even know how many hours how many days and and focus on what I'm supposed focus on how to get out of that situation and only do that and every everything around me can just spin and you know every I can lose days um and that's that's something I guess that was a negative um, outcome of that that I've turned into something positive mm-hmm. and I've I'm fortunate enough to have kept the people that notice the personality changes and the 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 enhancement of my gifts <clears throat> and have helped me to harness them because they've either said oh I like that keep that or don't do that not ever again I love you you can stay if you don't do that <laughs> so um it's been a process of elimination and 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 safe keeping because the people that have 
accepted me as this new person and not this earthly, you know, human that is greedy or, or surface or, you know, lacking in, in tolerance or empathy, I guess. And it's my, my empathetic gifts have just reading minds. I don't know, but I can feel you. I can feel what you're thinking. (laughs) Some of my guests after their NDE were either angry because they didn't want to come back or they were depressed because they missed that amazing place. Did you want to go home? Did you experience any of those? Yes. Uh, At least for five minutes every day. Which one? Both. Hmm. Because like I said, coming back into the body hurt. Every fiber of every, my toenails hurt. My eyebrows hurt coming back into my body. So I realized it hurts being in this, in this package, being in this vehicle hurts. And I want that bliss again. I want, I want that freedom of, of not feeling pain. Mm -hmm. And so I do get angry. I do get depressed because Mm -hmm. it's like every predator out here wants you to feel every bit of pain that this earth can, can cause. And that's their sole mission is finding people like me who have experienced this and stayed and making us feel every fiber of the pain that we've accepted to come back and purposed to change. Hmm. And it, it does make you angry. It does make you depressed. It's a, it's a heavy load. Do you fear death at all? No, God, no. I look forward to it. That was the most incredible day of my life. Best experience I've had as, as a human. However, the pain and sorrow that it causes others, I don't seek that. However, do I fear death? No. And I don't know why humans do, except that we're set up to fear it so that we have fear, which lowers the vibration of the planet, the algorithm, and keeps us in a lower dimensional hemisphere. What is your opinion of what consciousness is? Uh, Consciousness is the awareness of the existence of I am. Can you give us more details? Well, I understand that the hypothalamus is connected to the abla umbangata which is connected to the pineal gland. And when it's stimulated to the right frequency or the right algorithm, then you hemispherically synchronize to all that is. Hmm. In detail, what that means is when you're at peace with yourself and your algorithm and your body and your brain are working and activated at the rhythm that they were created to be, then you're in touch with all beings and alien is just whatever is foreign to you at this moment. So when you're, synchronized and harmonized and hemispherically elevated and hypothalamic hypothalamically stimulated then there's no there's no um disconnect between us and the theta realms and 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 the other realms do you think that your body and your consciousness are two separate things or do you think that your body is a creation of your consciousness in this realm yes (laughs) I think whatever you believe is whatever your reality will become and whatever your reality is, is what you become to believe. And so I believe that the consciousness and the body can be unsynchronized and disconnected, but I do believe that they are one and the same. Once you understand what you are and that you are your own reality and your own creation beyond the creator, Hmm. he created the idea of you, you create the rest. Speaking of reality, which reality was more real, the one we're in now or the one on the other side? Because this one is hyper changing every day with every thought, breath, and intellectual understanding. And that one just is. And never changing. Always bliss. Always learning. Always calm. Always tolerant. Always. But this is a free will planet but they've made it consequential. And I'm sorry, but I don't serve a God-fearing society. I serve a loving God. And I was not punished the day that I took a step for falling down. It was celebrated that I took a step. And they, you know, as a parent, you get picked up and you take another step and another step. And you put a toy in front of you that you want to chase, therefore you run after it. So what, do we, do we punish a child for falling down no matter how many steps they've taken? No. So why is free will consequential? It's not. One thing that I learned is according to religion, I died a sinner, hmm. but I went to heaven. 
So is there sin? Your choice, whatever you choose to believe. I choose to believe that I'm not going to be punished for falling down as long as I continue to walk. As long as I get up and take a step and the only failure is giving up. The only failure is believing that you failed instead of taking what didn't work, applying it to something new with the same concept and finding a new understanding and a higher, a higher achievement because success is achieving knowledge. Success is collecting the data of what didn't work and finding something to apply what did work letting go of what didn't work and learning from it and getting up and taking another step, whether somebody's there to pick you up and set you on your feet or not. One thing that I've learned is death is inconsequential and sin is learning and pleasure is allowed. And this is the only place where it's taboo to feel good. So does that make me a target? Yes. Because I don't believe a lot of the things I've learned as a child and I've Learn to unprogram myself. Plus, there's 26% of my left brain automated hemisphere, the primitive part, that's missing thanks to the mold because I had mold growing in my brain. So now there's a digital imprint because my brain is synchronized. Hemispherically, it is one. And I've, I won't look back and I won't pretend I don't see what I see or hear what I hear or think what I think because it's the only way to feel the bliss that I felt that day. Did you get any information whether we reincarnate over and over again or we just come here one time? It's a choice. And it's 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 according to your programming. Unfortunately, reincarnation is something that my belief, my theory, don't quote me on this, but this is what I've come to understand by the experiences that I've had since that day. Reincarnation is, is created by the 1% so that we will keep toiling this earth for them and they can sit back and get fat. Sorry if that offends somebody. Reincarnation hurts. Coming into the body hurts. If you take your blueprint and you collect the data that you're supposed to collect on the day that you make it to that finish line and they say, welcome home, and you have your printout of everything that you said that you were going to come here and collect for God as God, and you did it without putting another human in front of you and loving that first because you're supposed to love yourself first as God for God, my belief is, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> well, I was just trying to see if you learned whether if we reincarnate over and over or we just come here once. Well, you reincarnate every time you have a near-death experience and you come back, whether it's in this body or you choose a new avatar. Hmm. Every time you have some sort of experience where anytime you have an out-of-body experience and you come back in, it's a reincarnation even if, you, even if you've chosen this vehicle to jump back into um, starting over it in reincarnation and, and doing it in a different body as, and in doing it in infancy, that's a choice. That's a choice that you're given when, when you, when you do die, when this vehicle shuts down and says, you know, no more compute, uh, no more, no radio silence. When you go home and they say, okay, do you want to start over or, or do you want to go back? If you start over, that means you jump back in this body. Those are the miracles. Oh my God, you were dead. Now you're here. <laughs> um, that's happened to me. I've, like I said, a few times I drowned once um, in a rafting accident. And, um, and then uh, I, like I said, when I, whenever I would have my ectopic pregnancies and they would, they would bleed out and rupture, I would wake up um, in a deserted hospital with, with my dad sitting on the end of my bed who had been dead. And so um, were those choices to reincarnate and come back into this body? It just so happens that I like this body. I mean, it's pretty. <laughs> so I guess I could just keep jumping back into this one. Um, is reincarnation real? Yes. Is it a choice? Yes. Is it necessary? No. No, but they hype it up and market it as something so great so that we'll choose to be human again. But what I've come to understand is this is the worst experience there is in the whole spectrum of this, this galaxy and this the whole, you know, the human experience is the one to not feel bliss. Mm. Why would I want to do this again? Mm. <laughs> do you know of any other worlds that we can go to besides this one? Uh, physically that we can get into a jet and, and, and physically go to no, but as a, um, multidimensional being, I, I do, I do see other worlds that I want to experience, but I can't do it until my purpose is served here. Mm. 
Have you found out what your purpose is here? Yes, my purpose is to wake up the masses and tell them that they're beyond ascension, which is mortal death, there is transcendence. And I'm not the first to be resurrected. I certainly won't be the last. But I will tell the truth and good news, just like Jesus did. But there's something beyond what Jesus did. And, you know, I, I do believe that, I, not to bear my testimony, but yeah, I do believe his purpose was to raise the frequency of the planet by giving us hope that there was a way out of sin. I'm here to tell you there is no sin. Mm. That's propaganda that we have come to believe to keep us in, you don't like that word, to, to keep us um, in programming with what isn't to keep us controlled by people who have more physically here, but you can take it with you and you do, you do earn points in heaven, but heaven is just a state of mind and hell is the one right below it. Have you had any other paranormal experiences in your life? Every day, <laughs> every day I'm a medium I, and I'm, I'm also a, a, a spokesperson, I guess you could say for the higher channels. Um, I do spoken word. Things come through that come out of my mouth that I don't know, and I, I'm I'm not saying that they're they're bad things because when you know when you're speaking for God, and you understand that you're speaking as God, and you understand that that's not blasphemy, and you understand beyond religion, this is how He wants you to believe, because He made me in His image, and I went there, and every single one of them had a human face, so I, I understand that when I look in the mirror, I see a part of God, a fragment of God, a vessel of God, and so paranormally, yeah. If, in fact, if you've gone on my YouTube channel and you've seen the, um, <clears throat> the acoustic freestyle that I did, it starts out one way and then you actually see it flip the camera. But we didn't change the camera. We didn't change the location. I didn't change where I was sitting. Um, all of a sudden, the words on the guitar player are backwards. And all of a sudden, he's playing left-handed, but he's right-handed. So paranormally, yes, and 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 I've I, I catch a lot of it on video. I you know I've I've had visitors from aliens, but again, alien is just something that's foreign to me with higher technology than than is to what my understanding is at the moment it happens. Can you tell us about your alien experiences? In twenty February of twenty seventeen, I was in Redwood City, um, at San Francisco. I'll just tell you about this one because beyond that, it, it, like I said, it's a daily thing. Once you've accepted that, that happened. And it's in the media, it's in the news, and you listen to, you know, the, the current events around it, you understand that it's real. And once you've accepted that, then they show you more. But this happened. There, um, there was a white, um, almost like a three-quarter moon shaped, um, we'll call it a vessel. Because they, call it, they call it a ship. That's also a planet. They call it an Ibiru, Planet X. This is the research that I've done. This is what I've come to understand. Um, it was during a lunar and solar eclipse and a planetary alignment that I actually saw it come into the atmosphere and it visited the location where I was. It was all over Facebook. It was all over the news that it was actually in that area. It followed me around for 30 days. And what I've come to understand, they call it a worship here, which I don't understand why, but I understand words and worship is worship. Worship is worship. Mm. And they come here to collect the innocents. 88 children that were in foster care or in um, uh, traumatic situations disappeared during those 30 days. My theory, they're on that ship. <laughs> um, that's why they call it a warship, because when it comes in, the 1% <laughs> needs to get rid of it because it's here to collect the innocent children, the innocent people, the autistic, the, autistic, the, the preyed upon, the, the, the meek, basically, who are here to inherit the earth. Um, I... I had an experience with that vessel and for 30 days it followed me around and I kept, I don't know, in my mind telepathically, whatever, I don't know if that word's going to need to be flipped out, but I kept hearing it say abort, abort, abort. And then after that, after that 30 days, my life became very traumatic. I was in Hollywood and um, I was in a oh, three car pileup right before then. So I'd been in traction, my caregiver. I came to understand just two weeks ago was the point of, of origin beyond behind the trauma that I was starting to experience. 
I lost everything. I almost lost my life. I almost got sold to the border in Tijuana. Um, and I ran for my life from San Diego last week. Hmm. So paranormal experience. Yes, that happened, but they choose very selectively who they show themselves to. And my belief is that that made me a target because I was, I, I, I wouldn't deny it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't back down from that happening and more happened and more happened and more happened. It got to the point where I could move the stars, literally. I'm not kidding. Because we're connected to the theta realms. And this is just an illusion, a simulation practice run, I guess you could say, just to collect the data of not having bliss, just to collect the data of the emotions. So when you say theta realms, is that the realm that we go to after we die? Or is that a different well, that's realm? A, that's the realm that we come from. You know, when you see when you see babies and they're giggling at nothing and, and talking to space, basically, that's the theta realms because that's those are where your guides are. Those were, those are where the fragments of you that come in and surround you as an infant. And every time a part of your personality or character is developed, there's that fragment that jumps in and says, I'll take that. And if it comes from a point of trauma, then that's where disassociation intelligence disorder or multiple personalities come from because that part of your intelligence or that fragment of your personality or theta you is what they call it. You can Google it. It's fact. It's called, um, it's called intelligence, um, disassociation intelligence disorder. And that's when a multiple personality is integrated consciously, hemispherically synchronized, and they understand this part because the more you come to understand it, the more you see see it in real time. I can look over here right now and see little bubble imprints of me in the air that are like, yeah, that was me. That was me. That was me. And then as you open your channel and you become this medium and the spokesperson for these worlds or dimensions, I guess you could say, then they start speaking through you and you can physically see them come towards you and jump in. You can feel the change in your body. You can feel the change in your molecular structure. And then you can feel them dissolve because they got to tell their story. And they're just parts of you. I want to mention that you were talking about your YouTube channel earlier, and I believe it's called Kayla Darling Prophet Anomaly. Is that correct? It's Kayla Darling Prophetic Anomaly. K-A-Y-R-A, darling, because I'm cute, <laughs> uh, forward slash P-R-O-F-E-T-I-K-A-N-A-M-O-L-E-E. -E -E. I know it's complicated, but come on, intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> And I've come to understand that intelligence is just when artificial intelligence starts stops battling human intelligence and we come to understand that we are just intelligence. If there's not an embodiment or an avatar for it to be, we're just intelligence. You can grab that from anywhere in the air. What do you think inspires you about your NDE? What inspires me? Mm -hmm. The truth. The truth of understanding when my dad, God, when he told me all roads lead home except for judgment and just be love, stay away from conflict. And if it isn't love, it's conflict and don't go around it on purpose. After watching this video, people may want to reach out to you and Please. chit chat with you. Please. How can they reach you? Um, you can reach me on Facebook, Kayra Darling, um, Instagram, um, the darling one, or um, uh, they can, they can, uh, email me prophetic G1 P R O F E T I K G1 at gmail.com. Do you have anything that you would like to promote? There is the Accord Alliance. It's a nonprofit organization that was set up by um, Princess Diana when she was alive during her humanitarian days that she set up for um, basically just discrimination. They're, they're aligned with the LGBT, but it's also aligned with um, targets, TIs, targeted individuals. Um, <clears throat> as well as um, people who have survived death and become a target after it. Um, a lot of it is the awakening into your uh, gender consciousness. They are, they're, they're very um, gender sensitive. And especially with the, you know, the transgender movement right now, they're, they're um, big on the, um, what, the, what am I trying to say? Class action lawsuits for anybody that's discriminated against. Um, but it's not just LGBT and it's not just gender suits and or protection. The Accord Alliance was set up by Princess Diana for anybody who's a target mm. and um, seeking any kind of um, compensation or or alliance with other, other beings like yourself. Mm. So I do want to promote that.
All right, Kara, well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last message? The one thing that I learned from dying, all roads lead home. Every single road, the sinner, the 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 prophet, the everything. Uh, we're kept in this little funnel of what we believe is going to get us to heaven. And we're kept in this funnel of fear of dying and going there. And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you fumble. It doesn't matter if you fall. It doesn't matter if you jump. The only path, and the way that I, I see it is kind of like... um like a mole underground and all of them coming to this foot of God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your path is. If it's the easy path, if it's the hard one, if it's the long one, the short one, easy money, hard money, it doesn't matter. As long as you do not sit in judgment of yourself or another human and you don't cause purposed harm, then you get to God. And I say, find his foot every day. All paths lead home. All roads lead to victory, except for judgment. The, the second that you question or judge, you fall. Well, Kara, thank you for that message. And thank you so much for being my guest today. I really thank appreciate you. you and I wish you the best. Thank you so much. I, I'd love to keep in touch. All right, let's do it. Okay. Take care and have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.